Welcome to MacBreak Studio. I'm Travis Richmond, not Mark Spencer. Well, that's pretty obvious from the beard. Yeah, a little, little extra facial hair there. So I'm the lead editor at Ripple Training, and chances are if you've purchased a tutorial from us, I edited it. So uh, today I think we're going to talk about control services? Control services, um, because everybody needs to grade their footage, and you do a lot of grading, and if you're trying to grade with a mouse, your mouse pointer can only be in one place at one time. That's right. It's, 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 it can be a lot of work. So what are the control service options? Options. Well, well, a company that we're looking at today is Tangent. Now, this is the t one part of a Tangent element. Uh, they make kind of a, a modular system, kind of like Legos, so you can buy pieces. This is the TK element, and you can see here that you have the ability to control the, you know, the color balance, and you have this knob here for controlling exposure, mm -hmm. and then you have this button panel, and there's some other panels that, when put all together, I think equals about three thousand dollars roughly yeah and I, I actually got to work with the element in Final Cut for a little bit and not not just color grading but actually just editing it's a lot of fun to use right so you can map the buttons to do editorial functions oh totally you can shuttle make edits it's, right it's just it's a fun experience right in fact if you want to check out more of a full review I think it's Mac break 357 we need a full re review but that's not why we're why we're here to talk about the L element we're here to talk about the new ripple well, that seems appropriate. Yes, where Ripple wanted to cover the Ripple, it just, it just, we had to do it. And this is a product that was announced at NAB 2016, and it's this little, basically, it's a the, the little tiny, the little brother to that, and it's about 13 inches wide, about two inches high, really lightweight. It's compact, portable. You can throw it in your backpack. It has the same um, con con basic controls as the TK, even the same, you know. These little uh, controls are the same size as those, so okay. they have the same has the same feel when you're working with it. Awesome. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set this down here, and let's talk a little bit about how you get this to work with your software. Sure, let's jump in. Right. So uh, the key to almost all tangent products or all tangent products is this thing called the tangent mapper. Now, all of these controls have to be the software has to allow access to the controls and you can set this up by going to the file menu and going manage control maps. Okay. And out of the box, you'll see that the Ripple supports Premiere, Final Cut, I'm assuming it's a legacy version of Final Cut, Logic Pro, Motion. Does it work with DaVinci? It actually works with Resolve too. Uh, you just set it up, and because DaVinci works with a tangent element and tangent wave, this thing will work with it because the Ripple mimics the mapping of the tangent element. That's awesome. A lot of editors like to jump over to DaVinci for their color grading. This will work right out of the box. In fact, we've tested it. It works with Resolve. No problem. Awesome. So what I'm going to do is, uh, well, make sure it's selected. You can see here, you can have multiple apps selected here by putting a checkbox next to these. And the idea is, once, once you close this, you could switch the application really quickly from this menu here. So right now, I'm, I'm set up for color finale with Final Cut Pro 10, but if I want to work with Premiere, I just switch it right here, and the, and the mapping completely changes. Seems pretty simple. Very, very simple. Now, one thing that I should point out is that currently, Ripple does not work with the color board, the built-in so color board. you need third-party color grading software. You need third-party color grading software. And sp specifically, you're going to need the um, color grading, what is, excuse me, color finale from Color Grading oh, Central. That's great software. Great piece of software. In fact, they're they're working on the pro version. It's not out yet. We're using the beta version just so we can show you how it's going to work with uh, Color Finale. Awesome. It's it's fantastic. So let's let's look at it. take awesome. a look at it. So I have three clips here, Travis. Um, this first one was actually shot by you on our little road trip to Hollywood. Yeah, we shot that with the Canon C100 Mark II, and it's uh, cinema locked, which means it's logarithmic profile. And you can see that in the scopes here. Everything's kind of compressed. Yeah, very, very low contrast. Right. So we're going to fix that using the tangent ripple. So what I'm going to do is grab a color finale and just drop it right on the clip, just like that. And we're going to open up the UI by clicking this button called Open. And we're going to add the lift gamma gain controls. And uh, I'm not going to do any mouse-driven color grading at this point. Uh, I want to go over these uh, dials and balls really quick. These dials at the top deal with um, luminance, okay. uh, contrast. And so then the balls are for color? Color, yeah, color balance. So um, shadows, midtones, highlights, and then and, and, and these sections. Okay. Right. So what I'm going to do is uh, start working on expanding the contrast. So I'm going to go ahead and using the shadows control, I'm going to go ahead and just bring this down towards zero and I'm gonna bring up the highlights. And here's the main reason to use a control surface. You can work two controls at the same time. So as I'm bringing down the shadows, I'm bringing up the highlights. So normally if you're using a mouse, when you, affect, when you change the shadows, you usually end up affecting the highlights as well. 
and you have to go back and forth with your mouse. Yeah, there's overlap from the shadows to midtones, midtones to highlights, and this is what's great about these controls. I can essentially counterbalance the effect of one with with the other. So it's a, a lot more efficient workflow. Way more efficient workflow. So so I have I got my contrast stretched there now. I'm, let's say I'm happy with that contrast. I can now work on the color. And you notice there's a lot of yellows in the brush in the foreground. Yeah. I maybe want to push that a little bit more. So I'm going to use this center uh, ball here, which is the midtones, the color balance. I'm just going to push that towards yellow. In fact, I'm going to really go overboard so you can see kind of where what happens when I go overboard. And I'm using the ball, and I can just completely go around the wheel. Very, very sensitive, very tactile feel to the to these balls. Really just responsive. Like, very responsive, very much like the professional um, the tangent uh, TK, and I'm just gonna go ahead and a little goes a long way. So I'm just gonna bring that towards the center, which is gonna desaturate as I bring the puck in towards the center of that cross there. I just wanna give, give the brush just a little bit more yellow than it normally would have there, see? And then maybe I wanna pu push the sky a little bit. Of course, I'm, I'm now working on the highlights um, color balance, and I'm just moving that towards blue, and you can see I'm really pushing it toward blue. Again, I don't really want to go that far. Just a just little bit, just a small, that's the thing, small adjustment, and I think that looks pretty good. That's fact, great. Let's uh, see a before and after. I'll go ahead and uh, do a toggle, and you can see huge difference. Now, can you uh, map that toggle to the ripple? You mean the on-off toggle? Yes. Currently, no, but as you can see, there's two additional buttons here. There's an A and a B. These presumably can be mapped to other functions, but the beta version, and uh, it just, I don't have that functionality okay. right so now. But that would be, soon. oh my gosh, to be able to push a button and toggle it on and off, that would, that would be great. Yeah. All right, so anyway, there you have it. Let's move on to the, to the next one. Let's move to this shot here. You shot, you shot this as well. So we're at yeah. the we're at the Grauman's Chinese that was Theater. When we got to Hollywood. Yeah. So he's got. A, I like this. because It's got a lot of color, but it's still flat, as you can see in the parade scope. Let's go ahead and add, um, add the color finale pro and click open. Let's add lift gamma and gain, and we'll start again with the shadows. We'll go ahead and bring those down. We'll go ahead and bring up, bring the shadows up, and we'll bring the highlights up. There we something like that. And I want to bring out a little of the orange and the tiles and the, you notice there on the, the archway there. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and maybe push this toward, just a little bit towards orange there. And maybe bring up some of the sky. There, maybe a little bit like that. Yeah, something like that. And maybe if it's a little too oversaturated, I still have to use the mouse to kind of deal with the saturation. But, but it's, it's, it's one slide, you know. Okay. So... It'd be nice if at some point you could toggle the controls and yeah. use the wheel for that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it'd be nice to have the ability to, to, to change modes. Okay. But, but right now, not Beta. the case. Beta. <laughs> All right, so let's move to the last shot here. And uh, this has got... A, I remember that shot. That guy looks familiar. Yeah, some creepy dude looking through some, uh, some Venetian blinds. <laughs> this is our film noir shot in the garage. Uh, we used a Westcott. To flex light to simulate day for night. Yeah, the uh, one by two bicolor uh, flex light, really fun lights to work with. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. And in this case, maybe we want to balance it back to neutral. Okay. So again, drag the color finale effect there and click open, add lift gamma gain. And notice there in the parade scope, you have a lot of blue in the highlights. It's pretty, pretty clear. There's just a ton of blue in the highlights. So again, I always start with crushing. The shadow bringing the lift down to the zero line as much as possible. And then the highlights, I'm going to go ahead and bring those just under 100. I'm going to bring up the mids a little bit, maybe in the mids, just kind of brighten it up a bit. And now I'm going to go ahead and there's a lot of blue. I'm going to neutralize that by using the blue, the highlights uh, color balance wheel. I'm going to push this towards orange. You can see, look at, look at, look at the adjustment in the parade scope. It's just a really fast way to work. Oh my gosh, so fast. And I can adjust a little bit in the mids and maybe even, even in the shadows if I wanted to, uh, to neutralize any color cast in the shadows. I can do that very, very quickly. So the point being is I have complete tactile control with this surface and I can work so much faster just because, again, I can have my, my hand in two places at the same time. Yeah, it's, it's a great control surface. So can I expect one of these on my desk? Uh, after it's on my desk, <laughs> yeah, I would love to give all all you guys uh, one of these because it's obviously it's much, just much more efficient. Three hundred fifty bucks. It's pretty awesome price. Very very good price. I expect them to sell these things like candy.
<laughs> well, I, I think that pretty much well covers it. Yep, pretty much pretty much does. Um, thanks for uh, joining us, Travis. I'm glad Anytime. he's here, and uh, hope you enjoyed that. Check out all of our social media stuff. Click the links below. Check out Mark Spencer's really great uh, color grading tutorial for Final Cut Pro and his uh, Motion 3D tutorial. It's pretty awesome. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode of MacBreak Studio.